Today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite finds and the best part about today's episode is every single thing that I'm going to feature is going to be up for grabs. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Laura and I've been a full-time vintage reseller for seven years, almost eight now. If you already follow me over on The Recycled Life where I share my picking adventures with my best friend Selena, then you already know that her and I both love our critters. So let's just get started. First up is this adorable little kitty. This is an Anderson Studio Pottery Cat and I love decorating with figurines, especially when they're critters. And out of all the critters, other than a sea otter, cats are my favorite. I'm always on the lookout for these 1970 Anderson studio pottery pieces and if you are looking for the most adorable little kitty for your bookshelf I've got him right here for you. I've only found a handful of his pieces over the years and the last time that I found one was actually a year ago and it was on the world's longest garage sale in Long Beach Washington when I found a little one of his bunnies. I'm sure you can't help but notice this amazing ice bucket sitting right here and the matching picture over here. These are incredible pieces that I feel like everyone who truly loves mid-century design needs to have in their home. These are such fun pieces and conversation starters when you're entertaining and you lift up the ice bucket lid and all of a sudden you've got this cool one-of-a-kind piece instead of just a, you know, stainless steel bucket. Like who wants that when you can have this? If I had to pick a favorite piece from this collection, I have kind of a couple, but if I had to pick just one, it's definitely going to be this. This is one of those pieces that I will regret selling, but unfortunately I have to make a living, so I'm letting this beauty go. There's a few animals that are used over and over again in mid-century modern design, and gazelles are one of my favorites. There's just something about the way that they made that kind of modern abstract shape on them, and they've got their horns curling around. This guy's just too cool. He adds a statement to any bookshelf. If you are a mid-century gazelle lover, you need this in your home. There are so many things that I love about being a vintage shop owner and a full-time reseller. And one of the things that I love the most and I feel honored every time I get to do it is going into estate sales where I get to see inside someone's home and I get to find incredible pieces that have a lot of history to them. There's almost nothing that I love more than when I flip over a piece to see how much it is and it has a handwritten note. I already thought that this was a really cool candle holder and when I flipped it over and saw that it was designed in 1953 for Christmas by Paul Cowlick in Brooklyn, New York, I was sold. My heart fluttered a little bit and I knew that this was a piece that I needed to add to my shop. Typically when I find a mid-century modern piece, I will polish it up to make it look a little bit more modern, but this one was so perfect the way that it was, and I decided I'm not even gonna touch this. I'm gonna let whoever ends up inviting this into their forever home decide what they wanna do with it. So if you buy this from my vintage shop, please, please, please keep that little note on the bottom of this because I feel like this candle holder and that sweet little note are meant to be together forever. Today I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite vintage clothing pieces that are gonna be hitting my shop. This one is a 1960s robe from China and the sleeves on this one are so fantastic. They have these big folded up cuffed sleeves. The fabric on this is so silky smooth and it's got this beautiful rich emerald color. But the best part about this has to be this detail around the buttons. When I found this one, I was so sad that it didn't fit me. It is a size small, but it is a beautiful, beautiful Chinese silk embroidered jacket. And the cobalt color on this one is stunning. These are a fabulous pair of Eddie Karishma mid-century stoneware salt and pepper shakers. And there is just no excuse for you to have a boring pair of salt and pepper shakers when you can have some incredible artisan handcrafted, hand-painted pieces like these. This is another piece that I've had in my house for a long time, several years actually, and I'm finally ready to let it go. This looks so beautiful displayed on a dining table overflowing with flowers. I've even had it on my kitchen shelves before just because the detail and the craftsmanship on it is so pretty and I love the shape with the handle. Over the years, I have found a few of these fantastic Frederick Weinberg style horses, and I have a little black one in my personal collection. This is probably the biggest one I've ever found. This is the first time that I've ever found the female archer that matches the set. 
She's incredible. I feel like I really would not want to mess with her. She knows what she's doing with this thing. These are another one of those classic mid-century pieces. I feel like I see these a lot in magazines and in high-end mid-century homes. They're just incredible sculptural pieces. They look like they're from a thousand years ago. They have a really neat design and it was really special to be able to find the entire set. Another one of my favorite critters is donkeys or burros, and I envision this being pulled out when you have your chips and salsa and you're making some guacamole. Like, how freaking cute is this little guy? He's so cute. Such a great little conversation starter for when you're hosting an event. I decorate a lot in my home with brass bookends, and I'm constantly changing them as I sell the new ones that I find, and then I find something new and I switch it out. So I'm going to let go of my beautiful brass cranes. I've had these for a while now, and I feel like it's time to let them go. I really love the Art Nouveau period, and I feel like that's where my love for cranes came about because I kept seeing them over and over again carved into wooden dressers or in wallpaper designs or rug designs or textiles. And these brass cranes really remind me of that style. Oh, this is so cute. Again, you know, I love my critters. This is a Robert Maxwell piece. He does a lot of critters just like Lisa Larson, and his pieces are very hard to find, at least in my area in the Pacific Northwest. I've only come across one other one ever. He's very special and he's very valuable, and it was such an incredible score for a Goodwill. I scored this mid-century brass bird vase on a road trip with my husband, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a partridge in a pear tree design or not. Maybe it's just birds in a tree? I don't know. One way to tell if a candle holder is old is by the weight, not just the patina on it. These babies are heavy. They are probably about four times the weight of this piece that was produced in the 1980s, and it's larger. And this is about four times as heavy. It's not always gonna be an exact science, but that is one way that can help you identify whether the piece is really a true antique or whether it's just a 1980s reproduction made in Korea. Another way to tell is that a lot of these old pieces have actual stamps with a signature or some type of a symbol of the location or country that it was made in, whereas most of the newer pieces are going to have a sticker. So for example, this one has a sticker. Oh, just kidding. It doesn't have a sticker, but the matching one does. Hold on. <laughs> okay, here we go. This one has a sticker and it says made in India. A lot of times you'll see modern brass pieces that are made in India or made in Korea. Another place that is great to put candles is old school style on the wall. Even though these are from the 1980s, they are beautiful. This is another example of the Art Nouveau style in a more modern piece. And even though these are vintage and they're from the 80s and they're not as heavy as the 1930s or 40s pieces, I can promise you this, these are going to last a lifetime and they are so much better quality than anything that you can go currently pick up at Target or West Elm. Most of those items aren't even real metal. A few of my favorite pottery pieces that I always pick up whenever I'm out hunting are the Native American Namadi pottery. And please correct me if I'm saying that incorrect. I've never heard anyone say it. I think I just assumed it was pronounced Namadi. So please correct me in the comments below if I am saying that incorrectly. These pieces are so special. They're each handmade. They're always stamped on the very bottom. They use the most beautiful colors in this pottery, and whenever I look at them, I feel like I'm looking at the Grand Canyon. You can just see the layers and layers of the cliffside. Another Native American pottery that I'm always on the lookout for are these beautiful wedding vases. These come in all different shapes and sizes and different patterns painted on them, signed by different artists, but they always have this exact same double vase shape to it. This is another Goodwill find. It is an antique Middle Eastern coffee pot with this beautiful mixed metal Egyptian design on it. I believe that these are also called dollas and it has these two little cups that go with it. The beauty of pieces like this is they are still completely functional, but they also make beautiful decorations. A lot of you may not know this about me. In fact, I don't think any of you do because I don't think I've ever shared this here before, but I first got started in reselling vintage by having an online picture frame shop. And I'm gonna go much more into detail about that because it was a big part of how I got into selling vintage, um, how I sustained it, how I was able to leave my full-time job. So I'll save that for another video that's gonna come out soon. But the reason I wanted to tell you that is because I found this beautiful brass peacock mirror without the mirror in it. And because I used to sell picture frames and I still have a lot of my old inventory, I just happened to have a mirror the exact size needed for this. So this was a really incredible find. I often find a lot of woven wicker baskets that I pick up because they're really cute, but this is a very rare find. I've only come across a few of these vintage woven brass baskets. One time I had a copper one. It was really cute too. 
I love keeping my fresh fruit and vegetables out on the counter and having them in a cute basket makes a huge difference. This is a really fun modern twist on that typical rustic farmhouse basket that you would see. Speaking of mirrors, here is another beautiful mirror that I'm going to let go. This one has the most beautiful antique brass floral details on it and it has that perfect aged look so that you know it's a real antique. Even though most of us don't use these handheld mirrors in modern times anymore while we're doing our makeup, they make beautiful wall hangings. This is one of my favorite pieces in this month's sale, and even though it's white and it's very simple, this horse reminds me of growing up playing chess with my older brothers, and I feel like it's a really great accent if you're wanting to stay with a neutral palette, but you want some depth and some character to your pieces. I'm not showing you all the vintage clothing that I'm going to have in my shop, but I want to show you a few of my favorite skirts. Both of these skirts are from the 1970s and they just scream classic 1970s bohemian. This first one is so silky smooth and it's got this incredible floral design on it. The pattern on here is perfect for summer, but it also would make such a beautiful fall skirt over boots. This is probably the most 70s piece of clothing that I've ever picked up. Look at this beautiful handmade patchwork design. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you had fun getting to see this month's vintage collection up close and personal. Let me know in the comments below which was your favorite piece and what are you hoping to snag in the sale? Everything I shared here today is going to be available for sale on June 19th at 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. Don't forget to set your alarm clock because things go fast. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you guys in a brand new episode next Friday.